even if you've never tried a user form before, this video is going to help you get started. We're going to have a look at how to create a user form. We're going to have a look at how to make a user form appear. We're going to look at how to make a user form disappear. And we're going to put a button on a user form and make a very simple operation happen. And these are the basic elements, the basic processes with user forms. We're going to do something very simple in this video, but to do something more sophisticated, you're really just working through the same processes with the same elements. So hopefully this video is going to get you started with user forms. Let's get into the spreadsheet file. There's two spreadsheet files available with this series. You can go to the website to download them. There will be a link in the description below this video. Uh, one of the files begins with the word end, and that file is the completed file. So it's a good idea, if you haven't done so already, to just click through the file now, uh, click on some of the buttons, have a play with the user forms, try to understand what the user forms are doing. Um, my database has got 250 rows in, about 10 columns. So even a database of this size to have to find somebody's name even scrolling to the bottom, scrolling to the top, moving around the database, just using the cursor keys, that's going to take a lot of time. So the idea of the user form speeding up that process, um, literally at the click of a button, I can add somebody at the click of a button, I can edit an existing entry uh, in the database. So that's what we're doing with user forms. So with that said, let's get into the start file. Just clicked into the start file here. Obviously, the database element looks exactly the same. So I've just randomly generated uh, this data. If you would like to see how to randomly generate data in Excel quickly, you can look at our video uh, on that topic on the channel. So I've got some randomly generated data here. We're looking to create a user form to help us quickly add entries to the bottom and also to help us edit existing entries. So let's get started with that process. The first step is to open the Visual Basic Editor, so Developer tab, and then just click Visual Basic. Or if you're on a PC, you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is Alt F11. So now I'm in the Visual Basic Editor. Now I've got a couple of files open, and that always complicates matters in the Project Explorer. It's important to make sure you're working on the right file. In the bold type, we can see the names of the files. So I want to be working on the start file. So I'm just going to click on this minus sign next to the file I'm not interested in. And we can see now I'm in the area that relates to the file I am working on, which is the start file. So that's just something to keep an eye on if you've got multiple files open while you're working uh, with the Visual Basic Editor. So we're definitely in the right area of the Project Explorer. So I'm going to go up to the top and just bring this into your screenshot. I'm going to hit the insert menu and then user form. So insert user form and immediately we can see the user form appearing and also this toolbox appears. Now this toolbox will allow us to edit, manipulate the user form, add controls, buttons, text boxes, menus to the user form. So it's very useful to us. And let's just get straight into it. Let's get started. So we've got our user form here. And let's just add something very simple. So I'm going to add a button. So I'm hovering the mouse over command button. Just clicked on command button. You can see that the mouse pointer is now a cross shape. That's showing me that it's ready to add something to the user form. And there we go. We've got command button one there. And this is now on the user form. We can see in the bottom left corner down here, lots of useful information about this control, useful information about this command button. And let's, um, let's do some editing straight away. So this caption controls the text that appears on the button. So in the caption uh, area here, I'm just going to type in uh, continue. Let's go for uppercase. There we go. So we've added a control. We've added, in this case, we've added a button. And then the area in the bottom left allows us to edit, allows us to adjust how that control appears, how that control uh, behaves. So we've got our user form. 
we've got a button. So that's as far as we're going to go for now. And in subsequent videos, we're going to add more controls, obviously. So we've got our user form in the Visual Basic Editor, editor but we want it to appear in the spreadsheet. So how do we make the user form appear in the spreadsheet? Now, to do this, we have to get a few different things interacting. What we want, and let's have a quick look at the other file, we want a couple of buttons here and specifically a button that we can click that will make the user form appear. Now, if you've looked at our other coding videos, you'll know how to create a button, but we just go to the developer tab, then insert and then top left, just click on button. And again, the cursor has changed to a cross uh, symbol, so it's ready to add something. Hold down the Alt key on the PC, hold down the Alt key, that will lock the button to the grid, make sure it aligns neatly with the grid. And all I did there was um, position, size, and release the button. I'm gonna do that one more time. Developer tab, insert, button, hold down the Alt key, hold down the left mouse button, and then just sizing the button. I could make it really big if I wanted to, but this size uh, will be fine. Releasing the mouse button, and then immediately Excel is saying, what macro do you want to run when the user click this, clicks this button? Now, we haven't prepared a macro yet, so I'm just going to hit cancel here. We've got our button here. There's no macro assigned to it. I can't click on it yet. It's not running any code. So I'm just going to right click here, edit text, and then type in add. So we've got a button there with the text add on it. So the user wants to be able to click on that button and then our user form is going to appear. So somewhere we're going to need some code to make that happen, to create code, we're gonna to have to go back to the Visual Basic Editor. And here we are. And again, you've gotta be careful which file you're working in. I'm gonna just shut down um, the modules and the user forms from the other file. So this, this is the file we're, we're interested in. We've got our user form here. So we need to put another element in the Project Explorer, insert something else to accommodate some code, to store some code. What do we put in? Well, we can insert a module, insert a module. We can see module one has appeared here. So now we've got somewhere where we can put some code. So let's create a new routine, sub, and let's call it show, let's call it show, show user form. Keep it nice and simple. There we go. So we've got a new routine with an informative name. We can tell from the name of the routine what it does. Now at this point, I'm gonna edit the name of the user form because clearly if you have lots of user forms, user form one, user form two, user form three, that's not really telling you what the user forms are doing. So let's give the user form an informative name so we can understand later uh, what it does. And let's just call it, um, I'm just double clicking in the name area here. So I've clicked on the user form, double clicking in the name area. And then let's just call it data underscore UI. Data underscore UI seems to be a suitable name. We can see the name of the user form has changed now. So I'm gonna go back to the module to um, edit the routine, begin the routine that we've created. And very simple now. We're gonna type in the name of the user form, data UI. I did mean data UF there. UF for user form, UI for user interface, but UF is better, clearly because this is a user form, data UF, that makes sense. Data UF dot show. So a very simple line of code, the name of the object, the name of the user form, and dot show. So that's just gonna make the user form display. What's the name of this macro? The name of the subroutine is show user form. So now what do we have to do to kind of complete this process? We've got to go back to the spreadsheet and assign the macro to the button we created. So right click, assign macro. And then again, important not to get confused here because I've got multiple files open. Um, the macros that are in this file, they will display just showing the names of the macros. You can see the other macros, they have the name of the file first. So they're actually in another file, so we're not interested in those. 
we are interested in the macro that we just created. It's called show user form. So I'm clicking on that, clicking OK. So now if I click on the button, we can see, I'm just hovering over the button. We can see um, the cursor, the mouse pointer has become a little hand there uh, with a pointed finger. So it's gonna do something when we click on the button. So let's just try clicking on the button and we can see user form one is displaying there. Now clearly this is not looking too good yet, but we're just getting started, getting to know uh, the, basic, the basic processes to go to to go through. So we've made the user form display, but clearly we'd want the user form to do something and we'd want to be able to make the user form disappear as well. The user form won't disappear automatically. We can get rid of it just clicking um, the cross in the top in the top right hand corner, but we want to be able to control it with some precision. So how do we make something happen then? How do we make the user form disappear? Well, let's say, let's click on this continue button. It, let's say if we click on the continue button, we want a message box to flash up and then we want the user form to disappear. So how might we do that? I'm gonna close the user form for now. Back to the Visual Basic Editor. Now we're gonna create a piece of code that we want to be triggered when the user clicks on this continue button. That's specifically what we're trying to do. So in order to create some code that's triggered when that happens, we can, in the Visual Basic Editor, double click on the continue button that we created and the VBA editor automatically creates a new routine that will run when the user clicks on that button. I'm just gonna do that one more time. So we've got the user form. If we double click on the button, we go into the code and this routine will, what will run when command button one is clicked. So what do, we, what do we want to happen? Well, let's just do something very simple, trying to keep it simple in this first video. Let's make a message box appear and let's say the user form will be closed. There we are, I'm just, I'm just gonna resize this a little. zero and then let's just say message okay so, so some basic message box code there message box uh, the first uh, component is what will display in the message box the zero uh, controls the type of message box and then message will be the title at the top of the message box so that's one that's the first line of code that will execute when the user clicks on the continue button but we want to do more than that. We want this message box to flash up. We want something to happen. Then we want the user form to disappear, to close, to go away. To do that, we use a line of code, which is unload, and then the name of the object, the name of the user form. Our user form is of course called data underscore UF. That's the name of the user form we created. So these two lines of code now, uh, we're gonna see the message box saying the user form is gonna be closed. And then the next line of code, unload data underscore UF, that's gonna make the user form disappear. So let's give it a go, back to the spreadsheet. So add, clicked on the button, we've got our user form here. Then we're gonna click on the continue button. We can see the message box is displaying. We can hit okay. And then the user form disappears. So let's just go through that whole process. We've got an add button here. When we click the add button, the macro assigned to that button runs and we have a module in the Visual Basic Editor with a very simple routine there. So this is the routine that runs when we click the add button. It just shows the user form. And then we have some more code which runs when we click the continue button. Now we have to make sure that's in the right place and we click double clicked on the continue button in the visual basic editor that took us to this area where we can put some code in that will run when this command button uh, is clicked so we've got a few different elements there we've got uh, the user form we created we've got the new module we, we created we've got two short coding routines all of these elements working together to create the desired effect. And let's just demonstrate that one more time. Click the add button, 
user form flashing up. Clearly, this is very simple, um, but we're going to build on this user form in the subsequent videos to get it doing the things we need to do. Then we can click on the user form, do something. In this case, we've just flashed, flashed up a message. In subsequent videos, we're going to take some data from the user form and put it in the database. So we can add a button or anything else to the user form, click on it and it will do something. And then finally, a line of code to close down uh, the user form. So we haven't done anything yet, but we have worked through the main elements of creating a user form, creating it in the Visual Basic Editor first, putting a button in the spreadsheet to make it appear, putting something on the user form that the user can click to make something happen, and then making sure the user form disappears. So regardless of how sophisticated or complicated looking, a user form is, it will be working off these basic processes. So these basic processes, creating the user form, make it, making it appear and disappear. If you can master those, you are well on the way to making user forms work for you. So that's as far as we're going to go in this first introductory video. We're going to move on uh, in the future videos to get this user form working for us. We're going to add some text boxes for the user to input some information and then we're going to think about what code we need to get that information from the user form into the database and by that time we'll really be making some progress with this user form task. I'll see you in the next video.